Armor Stores video series. This particular segment is actually in four parts because it covers the inspection, maintenance, and repair of reels, which is probably one of the more complicated aspects of the equipment associated with fencing today. Part one covers the basics of the reels themselves, what their commonalities are, some basic testing functions, and some basic safety tips that you need to know when working on each of these items. Part two covers the upright reel. Part three covers the flat or what we call the turtle style reel. And part four will cover what we call the pizza box style reel. Yeah. Okay. Each of these reels have parts that are common to each of them. So let me reset my table and I'll cover what those parts are. First of all, each one of them has a case. They have a connector that connects to the fencer, to their body cord. They have a cable. Internal, they have a spool that the cable gets wound around. And either one or three springs that creates the tension and make, makes the cable able to retract back to the fencer. Then they also have another connector for where it connects to the floor cord and back to the scoring machine. The fundamental way that it works is that you hook up from the weapon through the body cord into the connector which is attached to the fencer by means of a clip and as the fencer advances down the strip what it does is it pulls the cable and starts winding the spring internal and creating all that stored energy within the reel. As the fencer moves back that energy is released and takes up the cable. One of the things that you don't want to do and is about the only thing that an armorer will probably try to invoke the death sentence for is that if you take the cable from the full length, the full 20 meters, let it, let it loose and let it run and slam all the way back into the reel. It does a number of things. First of all, it puts a tremendous strain on the wires at the connector and will cause them to break and that's your most common problem that you have generally with reels is breaks within the wires at the connector end. So, those are the basic components. Let's talk about the common testing techniques. Now, at a national event, the reels are checked when they come out of the crates and when they go back in. We do a very fundamental test on them, and it's primarily for functionality. In order to do a quick check for functionality of the reels, the things you're going to need are a small jumper, a Favaro test box or similar one that has the ability to detect intermittent breaks, and a very, very, very short Epe body cord. To hook this up, connect your body cord to your test box, then take the test box and connect it into the floor cord connector of the reel. Next, take your jumper, insert one end in into the B or the middle plug. Connect up either the A or the C. If you connect it up to the A, you should get a green light. That means that both the A and the B line are working. In order to test for intermittent breaks, do the same wiggle test that you do when testing the body cords, and also pull the cable in and out. If you get any intermittent light, that means that you generally have a problem internally with one of the connectors. But as I said before, generally your problems are up, up in here. Take your connector, or your jumper rather, and move it over to the C line, and you should get a red light. Again, do the same thing. Pull it in and out. Wiggle the connector. Make sure that you don't get any intermittent in lights there. Should you plug it in and you don't get a light on one side, but you do on the other, for instance, if I plug it in here and I have a light on the A and the B, that means that both of those lines are good. If I turn it over here and I don't get a light, that means that you have a broken C line. Reverse goes for the other way. If you plug in on the C and you have a light and you turn it around the other way and you don't get a light, then that means the A line. If you plug in and you don't, on either one, you don't get any lights at all, it could mean that the B line 
is broken. However, it could mean that all three are broken. Either way, you're going to have to go ahead and take the connector apart and go in and test each line individually for breaks. So that is the quick way that you test for any breaks or intermittents. If you want to do a more detailed test, in other words, if you want to actually measure the resistance in each of the lines, which by the way has to be three ohms or less, what you'll need is a little bit more sophisticated equipment. For that, I use my advanced test box or an ohmmeter, a regular body, EPE body cord, which I plug into the floor cord segment. And then I have an adapter that I've made out of some pins out of body cords. As you can see, it's got female or it's got male plugs on, on both ends. That I plug in to my input. And then again is I pull it out. And I can hook it up this way. And that way I can test each individual line for resistance using my test box. You can also do this by having either this adapter or if you have one of your short body cords, you can go ahead and plug that in and then plug it in and test that way. It works the same way. And again, you're looking for three ohms or less on each line. Now for some safety tips on when you're taking the, these uh, reels apart. This one is pretty easy to take apart. All you got to do is remove that nut and pull the case off. Now you want to be very careful when you do that because, again, this is all under tension. So if you're going to work on the inside, first thing you want to do is release that tension. Okay, and you want to do it in a controlled manner. You don't want to let this fly because if you do, this connector will start whipping around and can, can injure you. Okay. So once you get all the tension released off of that, okay, then it's fairly easy to go ahead and remove all the components from the inside. Now, just because you've released the tension on the springs doesn't mean that they're now not dangerous. The other problem is, is that if you have... Uh, they're coiled up and in containers, and if you're not careful, they can come loose, and they will basically all explode into a giant ball coiled up like this. Okay. That also means that you're going to have to take that and then rewrap it into the, into the individual containers. In segments two, three, and four, we'll talk about each of the specific uh, springs and how that works. As I stated earlier when I was talking about the commonalities, each of these has either one or three springs. Uh, the springs are stacked, uh, in the case of, of this, of the upright and the pizza box, they're stacked on top of one another. And the way they basically work is that as you pull, pull out, the springs move, but the tension increases in one to the point where it tightens up to where it can't uh, take any more. It transfers the load to the next one, the same thing happens, and then finally it rotates all the way up to the third one. It's important that each of these springs are put in connection. That's what we call basically a, a series connection. The flat turtle reel only has one. It's much larger and takes up a lot more space. In order to put the tension back onto the springs, Basically, just wrap it, and I normally wrap 8 to 10 turns, depending upon the type of reel. Hold it back in place, and then put the case back together. And as you can see, sometimes it is cooperative, and sometimes it's not.
Now, the next thing I'm going to cover is one of the common problems with, with any of these is the fact that you have a cable that keeps running in and out and it runs and it goes at various angles and it rubs, it rubs against what we call the grommet uh, on the flat reel that's called the uh, segment uh, it's normally called and then on the pizza box it's just called the guide. So part of the issue that you have with a lot of these is that over time that grommet will start to wear and start to have a groove cut into it. Um, I've got a couple of examples here of the segments and the guides for the, for the two others. And, and if you can see on this particular one where the cable has cut completely through the guide. Now what happens at that point is that you start uh, wearing on the cable and you can cut through and destroy the cable and replacing it can be a bit of a pain and that's in each of the different segments we'll talk about how to go do, about doing that. Um, the same thing goes applies for the segments on the on the turtle or reels as you, you can see there's a groove that started to wear through there. Now a lot of places will just go ahead and uh, just buy new ones and, and put them in. However, there is a way that you can repair these and get a longer life out of them. This is an example of one that has been repaired. And this white portion in here is, is what the repair is that I'm going to demonstrate here in a second. Okay. These normally cost about ten, seven to ten dollars a piece. What I'm fixing to show you probably will cost you less than Oh, 10 cents for the repair. What you'll need for that, of course, is a segment that needs repair, some baking soda, and some thin super glue, and a piece of tape. If, you're, if you have a problem where it's already cut through the case, you generally want to use the, um, the masking tape, and I'll show you, well, I'll show you right now. So what you would do for that is you would take a piece of tape and you would place it on the outside to form a base to work against. Okay. For this next portion, I'm going to need some help. Being of an age. So what you do is you take your segment and you take some baking soda and you fill it in to the spot where the groove is. And you may have to do this a couple of times uh, depending upon how deep the groove is. Then you take your super glue, which has been opened I hope and you take that and you put a drop of the super glue on to the baking soda oops came out the back what happens is is that that super glue reacts with the baking soda to form a plastic actually there's a silica in there because it's sodium bicarbonate And once that, once that sets, and you get that in there, oops, it will eventually harden. Now, part of the problem that you, want it, that you have with this is that as it soaks into the, sodium, or the um, baking soda, it now um, starts to, to fizz and gets hot. So keep that kind of away in a well-ventilated space. So... That is the way that you can go ahead and save uh, the segments. Now I'll put that aside and clean that up. And that's basically what you can do for, for both the guides and the segments. Now, once you have the, um, the mixture has set, then you want to take a file. 
in this case a, a small round file and smooth out the inside of the segment so that you don't have any rough edges on the inside that can wear on the cable. Okay. So that's the basics of the reels. As I said earlier in segments two, three, and four, we'll go into the specifics of each of these kinds of reels and how to work on them and some of the variances on, on how they all work. Thank you for watching this segment. I recommend bef if you go into and you see these online and you see the segments to watch this segment first again. Thank you. And please visit us at thearmorerstore.com. Thank you.